Hello children, y'all. Welcome to Sunday School this morning. Before we go into this lesson, let us pray. Close your eyes and bow down your head. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for bringing this lesson that you carefully prepared for us. Holy Spirit, teach us this lesson. Give us understanding of your ways. Make us the doer of your ways. Bless our teachers, bless our mommy and daddies, bless all our friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you go into your classes this morning, I pray the Lord will open your heart and give you understanding and bless you as you listen. Amen. Our lesson this morning is, I saw it happen. From our lesson, Ruth went to the river Jordan with an eyewitness and saw John the Baptist baptizing a lot of people. A lot of people. River Jordan, this thing happened. Well, before we go into this lesson, our memory verse for this lesson is Behold, the Lamb of God will take it away, the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. Let's read from our text. The text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 to 17. But we are only going to read verse 16 and 17. Let's read. Take up your Bible. I read. Verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heaven were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's recap of last week's story. And you remember it was this feast of Passover, Jesus was missing. Mommy and daddy, his mommy and daddy, who were they? Joseph and Mary, they were looking for their son. And they saw Jesus in the synagogue with the elders. Talking about, G about God. This is his, his there to do his father's will, his father's job. Now this week, as we rightly said that this thing happened, what happened? Well, see, John the Baptist came before Jesus. He was telling people, now repent. Repent from your old ways. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Repent and be saved. Where people were going and baptize. How do we do the baptism? It's from that our demonstration. This is a demonstration of a baptismal process, and maybe most of you have observed this in our camp meeting in Wales. Here, the saints, we fill the pool up, and the ministers, we do the baptism. Here we have Victoria, 
uh, who is going to be baptized now. And then uh, the minister, as Victoria was here, they confirm me. And we, uh, minister, we say, we baptize you, Victoria, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And she will be immersed totally in water. Everybody will be rejoicing. That's how baptism take place. People were going into the river. John the Baptist baptized. Eh? Then they said, are you to come? Are you the one we are waiting for? Well, John the Baptist said, no, 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 no. The person coming special. I'm not even worthy. I'm not up to that person standard at all. To even loosen his lace from the shoes. Well, we said, what? Are you not the person? He said, no. As they were saying that, Jesus arrived. Well, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. John introduced Jesus. And Jesus came to John. He said, baptize me. Baptize me. Jesus, oh, no, 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 no. John said, you're supposed to baptize me. Jesus said, you baptize me. So, you have to baptize me to do, to fulfill what God has for us. This is the will of God for, for the ministry, for his ministry to go ahead, to be open, to do his father's will, to do his father's business, to demonstrate what he is there for. You need to baptize. Jesus said to John, John did. As John baptized Jesus in the name of the father, in the name of the son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, what happened? Well, a dove came. He said, a voice came. The father said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Yes. There you know. What took place there was very important. One, the father spoke, introduced his son. Secondly, Jesus himself, the son, was there. A dove, the Holy Ghost. Three in one. Three in one. God the father, God the son, God the Holy Ghost. Three, they were all present. Is very important. See, Jesus that had no sin, he had no sin, shows us how to live, how we be baptized. We have to follow. Jesus obeyed his father and carried that out. John obeyed God as well. To carry that out. Obedience to the will of God. This is very important to know. Today, we also have to follow example. We follow example when we go to camp meeting. For example, Jesus, we have to do that. It's in our doctrine. One of it, the water baptism. We have to obey. Show. Jesus has shows, shown us example on how to live. Repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Our take home is for us to understand the Trinity. 
God the Father, God the Son, Jesus himself, and the Holy Spirit as a dove came in. Secondly, we have seen the demonstration of how we baptize, and Jesus gave us the example we should follow. From ages 2 to 5 as homework, this is multiple question here. Daddy and mommy will sit down with you to do this. All you need to do is just to put the right word here. Who baptized Jesus? Different names there. You put the right name there. Ages 6 to 8. Here you have like a puzzle. Put the name. The name you see here is all written here. Take one of it and circle it to match what you have outside. It's like a tree. Next week lesson is victory over the devil. Our lesson is lesson 5C. The text is taken from Matthew chapter 4. Verse 1 to 11. God bless you, children. Bye, and see you next week. Bye bye. Good morning, boys and girls. You're welcome to Answer Class. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas celebrations. God bless you. So, Happy New Year to all of you. The title of our lesson today is A Total Commitment. Memory verse is taken from Mark 10, 28. Lo, we have left all and followed thee. The lesson text is Joshua 14, 6 to 13, Numbers 13, 17 to 33. But the selected verses is from Joshua 14, 6 to 9 and verse 13. Verse 6 of Joshua 14. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jophanah the Kenazite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kedish Benyar. 7. Forty years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kedish Benyar to spy out the land and i brought him word again as it was in mine heart eight nevertheless my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt but i for wholly followed the lord my god nine and moses swore on that day saying surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou had wholly followed the Lord my God. 13. And Joshua blessed him, and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebrew, for an inheritance. You can close your Bibles for a moment. The title again is A Total Commitment. I want us to look at these three puzzles. One of it is full and complete, just like a whole puzzle, heart puzzle. And the other two have missing parts or missing pieces. One of it just had one missing piece. Let me ask you, will you say that that one, because it has just one missing piece, that it is complete? No, the answer is no. When we talk about total commitment, we are talking about wholesome surrendering to God. And that is why we are learning about this brilliant character, Caleb. Our lesson team, this period, is concentrating on the things, the qualities that make a hero. Many of us today, 
no matter our age, seem to have a hero, someone we look up to and admire. Who is a hero, if I may ask? A hero is someone who is admired for their courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. In the contemporary world, we have heroes. You can see in sports, in music, and in other professions, there are people that are outstanding because of the achievements they have made over time. Can we look up, we see, and we may recognize some people like Serena Williams, Richie Woodhull for boxing and Serena for tennis playing and many others. Even in the contemporary world, in the Christendom, we have John Wesley, we have our pastors, we also have our founder, Florence Crawford. In the Bible, we have heroes like Daniel, Abraham, John the Baptist, and Caleb that we are learning about today. These are people with outstanding qualities that people will like to look up and admire and follow. But there are things that actually separate them from others as a quality of a Christian that God wants us to have. That is the total commitment to God, total surrendering to God's will and the willingness to follow through, the willingness to stand for the truth. Caleb in our lesson today was a prince that was selected among other princes to go to Canaan to spy the land. We're told that when they came back, 10 of them came back with negative report. They told the people they are not able to go and take up the land. But Caleb and Joshua stood out and said, we are well able. If we look at Numbers, verse 13, sorry, Numbers, Chapter 13, verse 30, Josh, uh, Caleb said, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. That was the faith and the courage of a hero. And that's where we want to stand today. The same story tells us of a girl named Faith who sat on her bed and opened the Bible, and her Bible just opened to Joshua 14, verse 8, where she read, But I wholly followed the Lord my God. That was what Caleb said. She just allowed the word to come out of her mouth as if it's just, it doesn't have any meaning. But after a while, she thought in her heart, I am not sure... I am saying the right thing. She knew she was pretending. There was something missing. There was something she has not submitted to God. When she gave it a second thought, she read it again. She knew she, God is expecting more from her. She had to kneel down and pray. When she prayed, she told the Lord, I surrender all to you. You use me the way you deem fit. And do you know, when she stood out from our knees, the joy and the peace of God flooded her heart, which indicated that she has done the right thing. Caleb was 40 years old when he went to spy, but he held on to his faith until when he was 85. All others perished in the wilderness, but God sustained Caleb because he trusted in God. He followed through and at the end, he was given the possession that he was promised. Kedish Benel. 
So for us today, we want to answer some questions to bring the lesson close to us. When and why should a person start to wholly follow the Lord? The answer is now. There is no age that is too small. There is no age that is too big. Joshua and Caleb in particular started when they were a bit older. But Joseph and Daniel started while they were young. So you can start today. When we start off to submit all our hearts to God, does it mean we will not have any difficulties? The answer is no. But God has promised us, if we read in 1 Peter 4 verse 12, he said we should not think it as strange concerning the trials that will try us, that we should rejoice as much as we know that we are partakers of Christ's suffering. Why do we need to hold on to God and commit all our heart to him? Because there are blessings. Blessings in this world and blessings in the world to come. What are those blessings, if I may ask? Answers to prayers? Wisdom and understanding in school? And eternal life at end. At the end are there challenges that we may have for following the Lord totally yes but God is ready to give us victory have you taken a decision the key statement today is to wholly follow the Lord and when we do that God will surely bless us our activity for the week Caleb's reward for wholly following the Lord was the mountain he requested as an inheritance for him and his children. Make a list below of benefits or reward we will receive in this world or in the year after if we wholly follow the Lord. Our next week's lesson will be Lesson 73, an example of faith. Memory verse is taken from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let us pray. Thank you Jesus for this lesson. Thank you for the life of Caleb. Lord Jesus, thank you for the primary power lesson also. Jesus, please, we surrender our life to you. Give us the grace to follow you with all our heart until we meet you in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the service. Bye-bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.